Major argument number two, the patristic testimony. Patristic referring to early church fathers, early historians who had access to information, volumes of information that we no longer have, and told us some things about the origin of the Gospels. Since we left off with a question on Luke, we'll take just a minute and look at some citations with respect to Luke, and then we'll dive into the patristic citations on Matthew, the focus of this video. The Muratorian fragment, though incomplete, strongly infers that Luke was not the first gospel written, and this is information that probably dates from the second century. Tertullian, a few decades later in his work against Marcion, wrote extensively on the gospel of Luke. In his fourth book, in the second and third chapters, he strongly infers that there was a written gospel prior to the gospel of Luke. And the preface of the gospel of Luke itself, in the first four verses, we're told that this is not the first time somebody has tried to put this material down in writing. So right off the bat, we've got a lot of material suggesting that Luke is probably not first. But what does the patristic testimony tell us about Matthew? Let's start with Irenaeus of Leon, an extremely important 2nd century source who's just one link removed from apostolic testimony. Irenaeus was a disciple of Polycarp, who was a disciple of John the Apostle. Irenaeus is our earliest source for a whole laundry list of facts about Christian history. He was considered very important by subsequent historians, and his work was referenced as authoritative for centuries in doctrinal disputes. Irenaeus does not tell us explicitly which gospel was written first, although he does tell us that John was written last. However, Irenaeus does drop a number of hints that Matthew was first. In fact, throughout his work, he will frequently cite all four gospels in making a point. And except for he's citing a source and using the order of material from that source, he always puts Matthew first. He's clear that John is last. Mark and Luke will swap places between 2nd and 3rd, suggesting that Irenaeus may not know whether Mark or Luke was 2nd, but he's quite a bit more confident in putting Matthew 1st. This suggests that at this early date, Matthew was thought of as the primary source. Next, let's turn to Clement of Alexandria. We referenced him briefly in our discussion earlier of the two gospel hypothesis. Clement was an extraordinarily well-read man a younger contemporary of Irenaeus, who had the opportunity to learn under the tutelage of the great theologian Pantanaeus. Clement told us that the Gospels with the genealogies were written first. He proceeded to give an account of the origin of the Gospel of Mark and told us a little bit about John as well. Despite the fact that people have tried to do cartwheels around the obvious meaning of the Gospels with the genealogies, there are only two Gospels with genealogies that fit the context, and the four Gospel canon was well known in Clement's time. The most obvious meaning of Clement's statement is that Matthew and Luke were written prior to Mark. Now we've looked at a number of sources that give us strong leanings but nothing unequivocal. Let's go ahead and hit the nail right on the head. Origin of Alexandria, a man we introduced previously as a scholar scholar who could mop the floor with any professor alive today in a debate about early Christian history. This is a man who had an encyclopedic knowledge, a pupil of Clement of Alexandria in fact who stood at the pinnacle of early Christian scholarship. Origin is unambiguous. Matthew was written first. No equivocation. Eusebius, the father of church history, who had access to a library modern scholars would die just to spend a day in, is likewise unequivocal. He backs Origin up 100% on this point. Matthew was written first. The great scholars, historians, and theologians of the next two generations are likewise unequivocal. Epiphanius, Jerome, Augustine, and more are unequivocal. Matthew was written first. We've just gone through a list of arguably the biggest heavyweights of early Christian history, and we find not one single voice opposing this statement. Matthew's Gospel was written first. This is incredible multiple attestation. And we can't just blame it all on Papias and say, oh, well, they misunderstood what he said. We do not have a scrap of evidence from Papias, not even an allusion to Papias, suggesting that this information came from him. If this were anything but poor, tortured New Testament studies, this would be case closed. Matthew was written first. We have incredible widespread multiple attestation and incredible geographic dispersion of that evidence as well. We've got the empire covered north, south, east, and west all the way from the Holy Land in one corner to Gaul up near the other, multiple cities in North Africa, Rome, Salamis, and more. Heavyweight scholars who rarely agreed altogether 
on anything all support this claim that Matthew was written first. This is incredible historical documentation, and it's inconvenient for the preferred theories of many today, and so it is often set aside or altogether ignored. I suggest we can do better.